at one point we didn't know how successful we will be, but we knew we had to do something to protect our community and to show that building new jails, especially massive jails, aren't the way of criminal justice reform. Now, why would the mayor, along with the city council and those involved, want to sign off on this, building a mega jail, an absolute eyesore in a residential community where there's a humongous children's playground right across the street? Why, why would they okay that? I, I, I'm having a hard time digesting that, and so is everyone else that lives in the community. But I, I don't live in the community anymore, but just from the outside looking in, it, it's bizarre. Yeah, It's a bizarre place to put a jail. You know, why would they do that? Because I don't think they care that much. Um, if you look at development all throughout Manhattan, it's done at will, it's done as of right. A lot of it is done illegally, but is because we have a lot of special interests and because the real estate industry has so much influence in our city politics that they get away with it. Lucky Boys Podcast. The lack of resources put into those communities and maybe, you know, it's just that, you know, Chinatown doesn't matter to, to, the, to the elected. You know, I think there was a huge uh, sense of xenophobia, mm-hmm. um, especially when you have a president calling it the China virus, right? and all the misinformation that's been happening along social media, um, the news. You know, if you only get your news from Fox News and if you only follow Trump on Twitter, then you probably think the virus came from Chinatown, right? Mm. And you're like, wow. And even when we're out there handing out flyers and talking to people, it's just outstanding what people are absorbing from these news outlets and how they're communicating it. And so I think there, I think one of the main reasons of attacks on Asian Americans, especially our seniors, is because people have been brainwashed to think that they're the cause of the of of what we're going through, um, and what we have to do as activists and hopefully as elected officials and be like, no, like viruses come, pandemics happen, right? The Spanish flu happened. You know, we've almost dealt with an Ebola crisis a few years ago, um, and this. It, no one culture, identity, ethnicity is the root of this. And so we have to start there. But then we also have to understand as, you know, working with our local precincts, saying that this area will probably be a high targeted area because of that misinformation. Mm -hmm. And so whether that's working with the fifth precinct, which is the local precinct in Chinatown and say, hey, guys, like we know what's happening. We got to make sure that this doesn't happen in this community and whatever we can do uh, to prevent that should happen now i've I've seen you um and and some those of you listening may not know this but a photo of you actually uh which i thought was very powerful it was uh, it looked like it was during a protest and i see you with a bunch of uh people in chinatown beside you and behind you guys rallying and i believe that was uh because of the mega jail that they want to build right by columbus park yeah uh can you tell us a little bit about that and what and what has happened since yeah, so two years ago, our mayor announced that he wanted to build the world's tallest jail in Chinatown. Um, and our council member said it was the done deal. There was nothing we can do about it. And so I organized a community to create a neighborhood organization called Neighbors United Below Canal. And our first job was to make sure that we educated people on the process of this potential jail happening. And through educating through that process, making sure that people were coming to town halls, going to community board meetings, going to city council hearings, we realized that the city was conducting this process illegally. And so once they decided to vote on building these jails, which the city council and the mayor approved, uh, we filed a lawsuit stating that the city illegally conducted their own Euler process. And the Euler process is the process that they use for any type of developments, especially ones that are out of scale. Um, And so we filed a lawsuit and a few months back, uh, the judge ruled in our favor and said the city did do this illegally and they have to go back to the drawing board. Uh, The city appealed that decision, uh, but looking at the appeal and talking to our lawyers, um, they feel really positive that we're going to win this, uh, which is huge. Right. And if you think about it in a historical context, the tombs right now in Chinatown was built because 60 years ago there was a similar fight. The city wanted to build a big jail down in Chinatown. And even though the community organized and pushed back on it, 
a city one. And so this could be the first time that we organize the community um, and not just in Chinatown, but Tribeca, Lower East Side, coming all together and saying, no, we don't want this in our neighborhood. And I think we're, we're going to win this one. Why do you feel confident that we're going to win this one? You know, what we've seen, especially when, it, when you're fighting the city, that if you win in the courtroom, you, you, you have a shot of winning the whole battle. Uh, you, we tried battling them through the community board, which we won. We got everyone in the community board to vote in favor of the community. We tried getting the borough president to take our side. She didn't. She sided with the mayor. We tried getting our council member to take our side. She she didn't come to our side. She took the side of the mayor. The current council member in District 1? Yeah. And uh, and then we tried city planning. We tried uh, the mayor himself. Um, and we were going to lose if it wasn't for this court case. Uh, but, you know, we had a really good team that we were able to build over two years. Luckily, found really good lawyers who wanted to take this and take a risk, right? Like a lot of these lawyers work for the city and they don't want to jeopardize their relationship by going against them, especially such a big project. This was going to be a $9 billion project. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, at one point we didn't know how successful we will be, but we knew we had to do something to protect our community and to show that building new jails, especially massive jails, aren't the way of criminal justice reform. Now, why would the mayor, along with the city council and those involved, want to sign off on this, building a mega jail, an absolute eyesore in a residential community where there's a humongous children's playground right across the street? Why, why would they okay that? I, I, I'm having a hard time digesting that, and so is everyone else that lives in the community. But I, I don't live in the community anymore, but just from the outside looking in, it, it's bizarre. Yeah. It's a bizarre place to put a jail. Yeah, and you know, the narrative at first, they're saying, we're gonna close Rikers Island, and the only way we can close Rikers Island if we build these four new jails. Uh, however, we, we, we pushed back, and at first they didn't even make a, a legal commitment to close Rikers Island until we pushed back. And so now they made a bi- legally binding commitment, but we still pushed back. We said, you can't conduct this process illegally and try to get, w- get away with it by building this jail. And I think going to your question of why would they do that, because I don't think they care that much. Um, if you look at development all throughout Manhattan, it's done at will, it's done as of right, a lot of it is done illegally, but it's because we have a lot of special interests and because the real estate industry has so much influence in our city politics that they get away with it. For example, the building um, Extel Tower near the Manhattan Bridge. You know, when you come over the Manhattan Bridge, you see this tall glass building. The same thing. Is right? the blue one? The uh, blue glass building? Yeah. Um, the same thing, right? Why is that tower there? Why is it next to NYCHA housing, Section 8 housing? Um, why did they destroy an affordable grocery store, the Pathmark, to build oh, that's this? That's a damn shame. Yeah. Yeah, to build this luxury tower is because they have the influence. And, and I hear that that tower is actually not doing so well. Yeah. Um, no. There's some issues with the infrastructure. Some apartments are crooked. Um, and you know, that's all I hear people in the neighborhood how they miss having a supermarket there. Yeah. And uh, that was just a, such a huge landmark an important landmark for everyone residing in that area. Uh, now, you, you speak of special interest. And the first thing I, I start thinking about is like, wait, so you want to build a mega jail at, at the expense of the community so that the developers can make money? And who else is getting money? So the people signing the checks, that has, what's in it for them then? I think it, it, it just can't be they don't care. They, there's got to, I understand there's something in for the developers, but what's in it for the people allowing this construction to go on? So it's not only real estate, like the, you know, the criminal justice industrial complex is a lot of money. Like my brother who runs Combody, he'd been to these conferences where they're trying to sell you mattresses, they're trying to sell you bunk beds. It's like there's so much money when it comes to jails and prison uh, nationally that all of those are special interests as well, right? And one of the things when it comes to real estate is not just building this jail, but that building that structure 
will compromise the historic nature of Chinatown. When you go to Chinatown now, you see that buildings are eight, six to eight story high. But if you have something that's 35, 45, any other developer is going to be like, we want to build the same height to that building. Uh, they can do that? They can take the air rights? Yeah. Yeah. And right now, one of the things we've been fighting in this campaign is to implement a community-based zoning policy called the Chinatown Working Group Plan, which will put height limitations on any new development. But right now, everything is almost as of right. Mm -hmm.